In this lesson, let's talk about what we can do in ZBrush with our UVs and UV layouts. Now, you're probably not going to want to do any sort of detailed UV layout in ZBrush, but there are some tools in ZBrush that'll let you do some simple UV layouts and edit them in a, in a kind of a limited way. So let's concentrate on the body of our character. One of the things that's going to help us as we create our UV layouts are polygroups, and they are just basically selections of polygons. If we go into Polyframe on this, you can see not only does it show us the edge flow and where the polygons are, but also you can see that there are groupings here. So these are polygroups. They let us go in and select parts of our model. So if I hit Control Shift and I click on the arm, let's say, just that polygroup is displayed. If I Control Shift click on it again, it goes away. So it's just, it just gives us the ability to kind of isolate different parts of our model. And when we go to do UVs, it can help us in that way as well in creating separate shells. So you can see here that the ear right now, his left ear is not polygroup. So let's just take a look at how we can add a new polygroup. So I'm going to go down to the lowest level to do this just because it's a little bit easier. And so what we can do is we want to display only these polygons. So we want to hide and, and show different polygon selections. Okay. And so we can come in here and we can start hiding. So I just control shift click twice on that. And we could come in and just start hiding these if we wanted to. We can come in and drag across. And then if I hit alt, it turns that red and it hides it. And then what we could do is start kind of hiding other polygons. Again, Control Shift and then Alt. We'll come around the back side here. And I'm not going to do it, be too exacting here, but I just want to give you kind of an idea of how to do it. You could also do it with masking if you didn't care about the specific polygons that are involved. You could also mask through it. So let me just kind of real quickly get in here. And probably want to extend that a little bit more out the backside, but this is okay. So all we're going to do is, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can come down to polygroups, and we can just say uh, group visible, or we can hit Control W. It's a little hard to tell there, but if you hit it again, it'll change colors. And so that gives us another polygroup. Control shift click in the canvas and that brings us back. And so you can see now we have our ears separated out. So in order to create a UV layout, at least one that you're going to want to use that's a little bit more um, user friendly, uh, you could come in and come under UV map and you could start to create some, some maps down here. But if we look at this, there's really just some simple projections and that's probably uh, not what you want for something that you're going to be painting in Mari. Most of the time you're going to be wanting something that's a little bit more unfolded uh, like you would do in another application. And, and so in order to do that, we're going to go into Z plugins and I'm going to go to UV master and let's take a look at this. So I'm going to turn off symmetry, but I'm going to turn on polygroups and polygroups are going to enable us to create a different shell, a different UV shell for each polygroup. So instead of trying to uh, pelt this whole guy as one piece and maybe breaking it apart in certain areas, this will explicitly tell ZBrush that, no, we want each polygroup to be its own shell. So if you've got the arms and the limbs and everything broken out in a logical way, this can really help you uh, with your UV layout. If you already have some seams, you can use your existing UV seams. There's also some control painting, which is kind of like you can guide ZBrush sort of to tell it where you want the seams to be and where you don't want any seams to be. And that's kind of a, a back and forth with getting those uh, exact. For us, we're going to go ahead and just hit polygroups. And I'm just going to go ahead and unwrap. Now, there is an option for working on a clone. If you do that, all you have to do, it'll basically take a copy of this. You'll be able to work on your clone and then um, copy those UVs back. So let's actually do that. That'll enable us to, to do some other stuff here. So let's work on the clone. It's going to create a quick copy here, which you can see this. Now we're going to have, still have polygroups on. You can see it kept all of our uh, all of our polygroups. And let's go ahead and just say unwrap. So it's going to go through that process of unwrapping. You can see how many islands were generated. So now in order to see the actual layout, there's a few things we can do. 
quickest would be to come in on this clone and just say flatten. And this basically shows you the geometry laid out in a UV space. And you can see it actually cut it where those polygroups are. So if you wanted to, you could come in. I'm going to control click on one of these pieces. And it's actually uh, on the polygroup itself. Um, it actually separates that out. And so let's do this one. And I could actually manually move this. This is not going to be the best way to go about UV layout, but if you have to fix something, if you have to move one little shell, that can definitely work. So now, once we've you know, edited this and moved it all around, it's going to control drag to unmask everything. Let's go in and unflatten it. So now we're back to the geometry. And to get it back on our original piece, all we have to do is say copy UVs. Okay, and then we need to jump back to our model and then we will paste those UVs on. So now we've pasted those UVs. Let's go back down to our texture map here. And I want to create a new from UV map. And that, you can see here, reflects the UV map that we've created. So it just allows you to kind of check where the UV shells are located. Now this may be fine for you, uh, depending on what your needs are. But a lot of the times you'll want to actually create your UVs in another application and bring those into ZBrush. So assuming that you didn't start with a UV mapped mesh when you're building it up in ZBrush, you can take your low res piece of geometry out of ZBrush, export it, do the UVs, export it from whatever application, and then just re-import those. So if you remember what those UVs look like, we're at the lowest level here. Let's go ahead and import and we're just going to import an OBJ that is this exact model, but with UVs on it. And this is going to have, uh, I believe it's done with a, some multi-tile stuff from Mari uh, that can be used in Mari. So let's go to import. And then within the project files, I'm just going to go to other files, geometry. And I'm going to grab the Wolf Low UV OBJ. So I'm just going to import that. You can see that the subdivision levels weren't affected. So I can still go up the subdivision levels and you can see the geometry, all the detail is still there. But let's check and see if anything happened to the UVs. So if I go into texture map and I want to create a new, new from UV map. So now you can see that these are all different. Now it doesn't look that great, but the reason for that is this is a multi-tile layout. And so we can actually now export this from ZBrush if we would go to Let's go to multi-map exporter. So this is going to allow us to export our, our multi-map uh, textures. Now, we don't need to export textures. I mean, we're going to be texturing it in Mari, so, but I just wanted to show you that those are actually there. And so if we come down to uh, our export options, you can open those up. And then if you go to file names, you can see down here at the bottom this UV tile ID format. This is the format that, you, that ZBrush will save out your multi-tile uh, images, if you if you have some sort of base poly paint or something that you're getting out, um, you can change this. And so this right now is set to UUVV, both under, uh, both um, not capitalized, lowercase. And then you've got this one you can do, or you can actually do a, a UDIM like in uh, Mari if you want to, to number them that way. That'll make a lot more sense if you're going from ZBrush to Mari. You want them numbered the same way, uh, obviously help you. And so if you want to export images, you can do it that way. But when you export your uh, model, it'll have those multi multiple tiles um, for your UVs, which is kind of what you want. It's kind of one of the great things about Mari is the ability to, on one model, create multiple tiles and, and use all of that texture space on this one particular model and just make it really, really uh, high res and look really, really great. All right, so that's how we can work with UVs. Again, it's limited to what you want to probably do in ZBrush. You probably, if you want to have a lot of control over it, do it in another application and import those in, but it's really, really easy to do uh, to import those back in and have those update. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is removing any unnecessary geometry. So again, we want to make sure that the model that we bring into Mari has just what we need to be able to paint so we don't have any extra stuff that Mari's having to think about as it uh, as you move around and start to paint. So in the next lesson we'll take a look at getting rid of some of those extra things.